Hi, I'm Brian Mendenhall. I am the worldwide head of security partners at AWS. Hi, I'm David Kerber. I'm the security and compliance practice lead at Vertical Relevance. Hi, I'm Brian Jakovich. I am the managing director and head of the AWS, AWS practice at Vertical Relevance. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, why don't we just kick this off and just tell me a little bit about Vertical Relevance and how you partner specifically with AWS. Yeah, so Vertical Relevance, we're a business and technology uh, consulting firm, really. Our focus is, um, we have an industry practice really focused on you know, financial services and then the AWS practice. And the idea is to marry those two together to help customers, financial service customers, use AWS. One of the core aspects of that is security and compliance. Um, and you know, when you think about you know, global financial services customers, they simply have to be secure, right? You know, it's critical it, for a board level, everything about it. So you know, we work with AWS, well, not exclusively with AWS, but um, the idea is how do we help our customer build all the capabilities from a security perspective, the guardrails, the infrastructure, everything so that a customer can effectively put either data or workloads on AWS. So awesome. So let's talk, let's dive really deep, really quick on Amazon Security Lake, right? Growing a, a ton of momentum in the field. Customers are absolutely loving this service. Where are you seeing the best fit for Amazon Security Lake? What are the use cases, the customer use cases that you're seeing being most applicable to the Amazon Security Lake uh, adoption? Yeah, so where, where I see it really being valuable is, is in the enterprise, like Brian said, we work with financial services. The number of things that we have to protect is growing rapidly, right? So the cloud has enabled a lot of fantastic capabilities around developers can deploy what they want, when they want, right? Enabling all kinds of innovation. But now we have all kinds of new attack vectors and risk surface area we need to think about. So we're deploying more, we're deploying more kinds of risk. And then we're also, for all those new kinds of risk, we're, we're getting new tools, right? And so we need to understand all that. And we have, we have overwhelmed our security teams with all kinds of fantastic information to help them understand their security posture, their risks, their, their, uh, their data and where it's at and, and what kind of concerns they have there. And there's no way to, to kind of understand it all, right? I don't want to go look at five different dashboards to understand what's going on with my environment. And so what Security Lake does is it gives us a place to put all of that information. So information from AWS native tools like, like Security Hub or Trusted Advisor, uh, guard duty, those, right? But also partner tools, right? We've got a lot of uh, third party tools we've built. We have a, a module control broker that generates security findings, right? And, and posture management concerns. And so now we have a single place to put all of them and, and keep track of them and be able to act on them more as a group. Yeah. So we are working with a, uh, we worked with a global payments company and they have, uh, hundreds or thousands of AWS accounts. Like I was talking to their head of AWS security and he said, yeah, they, they just bought a new company and that company has 300 AWS accounts. Wow. How do you secure that, right? And how do you do that at scale, right? And not just scale from, we have a lot of data, but we also have dozens of additional teams, right? That we need to ingest that information. And that's where the security light comes in. You, you hook it up and you just start ingesting that, that information and now you're able to apply your, your controls that you care about across a huge scale of AWS deployment and then make that available for those teams as well. So we built that, that data ingestion, that security lake infrastructure. So we have um, AWS tools coming in, their CSPM product, we're ingesting all the findings from that. Their logging tools, we're ingesting everything from that. And now we have a central place for the cybersecurity leaders to really understand their risk portfolio across the entire organization and make resource and financial decisions around how to mitigate that risk. Awesome, so maybe yeah. uh, the fabled single pane of glass doesn't exist, but we have a single, yeah, right. we have a single repository at least, right? We're maybe, right. maybe going in the right direction. Yes. And maybe that, that single pane of glass will be a result of the single bucket to put all of your security metadata. Yeah, absolutely. And it, you know, the single pane of glass is kind of a myth. Yes, right? it doesn't, right? the unicorn of security. I used to sell single panes of glass, it, it wasn't, but that's like, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a challenge to build that, but having one place where all the data is, yeah. right, you can really 
build those different perspectives on that. So maybe instead of a single pane of glass, we've got a, a kaleidoscope of, nice. of perspectives on yeah. that data, right? And the, the teams that need that information can get the information they need out of it, and there's, there's a single source. So, uh, for instance, one of the things we, we solve for them is in the payment space, they have PCI, right, that they're thinking about, and they have to get authority to operate in order to deploy a workload into production. So that process um, for a lot of companies is still in that show me a screenshot uh, era, yes. right? So in order to help them get past that with hundreds of applications that take hundreds of hours to certify for ATO, we were able to leverage that security lake and build a, a specific workflow for that authority to operate uh, process. Wow. So you could go in and you could say, here's my application. I want to look at this application. I want to look at it in test. And here are the controls that I am interested in. And it will, in a consistent way, in a repeatable programmatic way, right, validate whether or not that application is in compliance with those controls and produce the evidence yeah. that the auditor needs to That's be able so to, to put in their records, right? So if they get audited themselves, yeah, it's fantastic. An accelerator to ATO. Yeah. What an awesome use case. And, and really like an accelerator to innovation, Yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, perfect. And this is something we see just in so many of our customers. So what we're doing is we're taking you know, the uh, Security Lake solution, and we're building this, these like, in, uh, we call them reusable accelerators. So building on top of that, and then open sourcing that, those types of things, right? Because this is the type of solution that we want, you know, many other uh, payments customers, other, you know, customers of financial services to really take and adopt. I mean, we looked at uh, Security Lake as really kind of core in uh, enabling the security strategy as, as things adopt more automation, and more focus, right? Data is not just for like analytics, right? It really, the security aspect is important as well. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. you're 100% right, right? That Amazon Security Lake gives customers the opportunity to have a, a consolidated uh, repository for which they can apply analytics, right. but there also becomes the, the use case of threat hunting. Yep. Right, which is is the anti-analytical approach to identifying indicators of compromise or attack, um, and so it's interesting to hear that that you're seeing that emerging use case come out of customers' yeah. uh, needs as well. Right, yep. right, yeah. E everything in security and governance starts with inventory, yeah. right? And so now we've got one place where everything goes; it's all in there, and we can look at it and work on it. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So uh, speaking of Amazon Security Lake, yeah. what is it that sets it apart from other solutions that you guys see in the market? Yeah, so I, I really like it for, for three reasons. The first is uh, undifferentiated heavy lifting, right? That's one of my favorite AWS phrases, right? There's, we're all operating on the same cloud and we're all running into the same problems and we're probably solving them in very similar ways, right? So, so being able to just have that off the shelf and use it CISOs are challenged on budgets just like everybody else. Yeah. And generally security organizations don't have a, a platform engineering team or a set of application developers who are experienced building data lakes and user interfaces and dashboards and, and mapping fields between different data sources and things like that. So all of those problems are just kind of addressed, right? And, and managing a data lake and the maintenance that goes into that, the security team doesn't want to learn those skills and they don't have to. So really, really excited about that. Uh, the second thing that I like about it is it automatically ingests from a whole bunch of services they're probably already using anyway. So from uh, guard duty, security hub, AWS config, CloudWatch, like all of those things, they just work. And you just turn them on and don't, don't click, right? You got to do it in, in infrastructure as code, but you just turn them on and then you just get those for free. So again, that, that undifferentiated heavy lifting is, is really valuable for companies that are trying to innovate in other areas, right? That's where they want to spend their dollars investing and doing innovative things. The thing I'm most excited about uh, is the OCSF, so the Open Cybersecurity Schema Framework. Um, everything else I said, I could build myself if I wanted to, right? I could get the engineers together. I could, I could build that product. What I can't do 
is get every major CSPM and CNAP to automatically map their data to my security link. So having uh, an open standard that a bunch of partners are already using that then I can just automatically ingest right into my security lake and leverage, that's a huge advantage uh, to be able to take, to be able to use. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And you get extra credit for saying the open cybersecurity schema framework it's a mouthful. Uh, without tripping. I, I don't, I think it's the first time I've done it all week, actually. Yeah. Right. Yay, both of us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but I think I think it's such a good point, right? That yeah. like AWS has always provided the building blocks for uh, for people that are able to build right. with like uh, with foundational concepts. Yep. Right. So there are are several organizations and companies out there that have built their own security lakes in right. the past with the building blocks from AWS. But this takes this is the easy button. Right. Right. And it's really kind of like a solution that uh, is much easier to deploy. Mm -hmm. It's got the, it works with everything else. It's got the OCSF, I cheated there, but it's yeah, got the yeah. OCSF uh, built into it so that everything talks to itself. Right. We talked about threat hunting and the ability to threat hunt across data that is normalized. Yep. That's, that's nice. That's a big deal. Yeah, yeah that's a big deal. Um, yeah. So that's interesting to see those benefits uh, from your perspective for, for customers. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So I have heard that vertical relevance has RSA. Uh, can you tell me about one of them? How do you guys use it uh, specifically with Amazon Security Lake? Yeah, so we have uh, reusable solution accelerators that we uh, make available to all of our clients uh, free of charge and we use it to accelerate the projects that we're working with them on and, and innovate quickly. So we have an RSA for Security Lake. There's kind of three main components. There's the Security Lake itself and getting that set up. But there's also custom data sources for Security Lake if you want to start ingesting your own data. And there's custom subscribers if you want to receive events or query from the Security Lake. And we have examples of all three of those components uh, ready to go and use for customers to help them s streamline even more their, their adoption of it. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome accelerator for customers that are using Amazon Security Lake or plan to. Right. Yep. That's great. Great. All right. Cool. So thank you guys so much for being here uh, thank once you. again. We love having you guys as a security competency partner. That means that your security offerings, uh, AWS lifted the hood, we inspected the magic that you guys make, and we technically, val technically and operationally validated your security offering uh, for AWS customers, which is incredibly difficult uh, to get through. It is, uh, thank you guys. You don't look too beat up, uh, but I know that you have <laughs> taken some punches along the way. So thank yeah. you so much for being here. Thank you. We love being a partner. We love what you guys are doing with Amazon Security Lake. So thank yeah. you guys. We appreciate it. Likewise. All right. Thank you. All right.